Live from KSAT 12, the night beat starts right now. NBA All-Star Kobe Bryant among nine people who died in a helicopter crash in California this morning. Several outlets have reported Kobe's daughter Gianna was also a victim of the crash, but the L.A. County Sheriff's Office would not confirm the victim's identities. The L.A. Fire Department also reporting a stubborn brush fire broke out as a result of the crash. Debris from that crash, steep terrain and magnesium reportedly made it difficult for firefighters to extinguish the flames. The investigation is still ongoing tonight. Meantime, Kobe's death shocking people in the pro basketball world and so far beyond. Tonight from the Staples Center in Los Angeles to Madison Square Garden in New York City, buildings lit up in purple and yellow as fans mourn the icon's death. The night team Stephen Cavazos with reaction from basketball fans right here at home. It's, it's, it's surreal. I can't even believe Kobe's he's dead at 41, especially for his kids. It's, just, it's surreal. NBA legend Kobe Bryant remembered by his fans today after he and eight others were killed in a helicopter crash early this morning. Growing up watching Kobe, I, I love Kobe, so, you know, it's very sad. His 13-year-old daughter Gianna reportedly also dying in the crash, their deaths sending shockwaves across the country. And here at home, fans are lining up outside the AT&T Center for the Spurs game against the Toronto Raptors, but it's clear this NBA legend was on everyone's mind. So it's just like crazy that... This happened to a basketball player as we're heading to a basketball game. Basketball coach Rachel Huggins was with her students when they learned the sports icon was killed. Huggins says he left a mark on the basketball court. He's one of the best. He might be the best ever. Longtime Spurs fan Ian Gonzalez agrees. That's what he played, everything about him. I love Kobe Bryant. Gonzalez says despite the Spurs rivalry with the former L.A. Laker, Bryant was one of the most respected players in the game. It's, it's tragic, man. I mean, he changed the game of basketball as we know it. Now, coming up tonight on Instant Replay, we hear more from fans inside the AT&T Center, including reactions from both inside the Spurs and Raptors locker rooms, and our exclusive with David Robinson. That coming up tonight on Instant Replay. Reporting live outside the AT&T Center, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Myra. All right, thank you, Stephen. Other news we're following today, Converse police are searching for three suspects after a shooting sent a man to the hospital tonight. This happened at a home on Meadowgate. Converse Police Lieutenant Jeff Shook says a disturbance led to a physical fight at that home. He says as the victim was running from the home, that's when he was shot in the leg. Three people then got into a black BMW and took off before ditching the car at a nearby park. Neighbors say that they were caught off guard by what happened. It's, it's a good neighborhood usually. I mean, this, this is weird that this, this happened. Honestly, I, I bought this home like seven months ago and uh, I, there's been no issues. It's been real quiet and uh, this is just out of character. Police say the three suspects took their shirts off after ditching the car and were seen running in a field. Shook added that they, although they called off the search tonight, police have evidence left behind by at least one of the suspects in that car that will help narrow down who they're looking for. Also new tonight, the San Antonio Fire Department knocking down a fire over on the northwest side. It happened at a home in the 300 block of Alexander Hamilton. Fire officials say they got the call around 820 tonight. When they got to the home, they say the flames could be seen coming from the left side of the home. Crews had that fire contained pretty quickly. At least one person was treated for precautionary measures. As of right now, that fire is still under investigation. And that wasn't the only fire today. Hazmat crews were called out to the scene of a fire at a metal finishing company on the northwest side. This happened around 2 this afternoon at Aerotech Metal Finishing. That's on Mainland Drive, not far from Bandera Road. Fire officials tell us that chemicals inside caught fire, but crews were able to put those flames out quickly. Some firefighters had to be decontaminated afterwards as a precaution. No word on what caused this fire. The Texas Commission on Environmental Quality has been called out to test chemical runoff from the water that was used to douse the flames. San Antonio police say they are searching for multiple suspects after a man was killed during a home invasion last night. It happened around 1130 on Hidalgo Lane over on the west side. Police say the suspects went into a house to rob the people inside. A man in his 30s was shot in the leg and bled to death after the bullet hit a major artery. Police tell us they are looking for four people they believe could have been involved. And police say a woman is in critical condition after a pickup truck crashed into a pole south of downtown last night. This happened after midnight at the intersection of Gunther Street and Eagle Land Drive. Police say the crash was so intense 
The woman who was a passenger in that pickup went through the windshield. She was taken to a hospital. Police believe the driver was under the influence and is now facing an intoxication assault charge, which could be upgraded to manslaughter if the victim does not survive. Another accident to tell you about. Two young children and two adults recovering tonight after their SUV rolled down a 100-foot embankment. According to police, the crash happened this morning on O'Connor Road along I-35 over on the northeast side. We're told the driver lost control while approaching O'Connor Road overpass. A man was transported to the hospital in serious condition. A woman and two children, meanwhile, transported with non-life-threatening injuries. Police say it's unclear if those involved in the crash were related. Highways, buses, trains, and airports, they're ways that we all get around, and human and sex traffickers are no exception. The airport is a major one, which is why the San Antonio International Airport just signed on to a new partnership with the Department of Homeland Security. Gordy Friedman reports it's a campaign to identify survivors and stop traffickers. We're the heartbeat of the airport. Any kind of information comes into the airport and gets disperses by our department. This is a rare view of the San Antonio Airport Integrated Command Center. Shanna Dewey and her team intercept all calls for emergency and safety issues, including human trafficking reports. It's one of the first things that we trained on watching cameras. There are certain hints that we watch for. We take the phone calls when somebody thinks that they're viewing or witnessing human trafficking firsthand. The entire airport staff is trained as well, part of an initiative two years in the making that creates created a human trafficking program committee made up of law enforcement, advocacy groups, and survivors. But this week, a huge step forward. Just days ago, the San Antonio airport became the fourth in the country to join the Department of Homeland Security's blue campaign addressing human trafficking. Now it's going to be a formalized training, which through DHS per, uh, puts on a virtual training module and provides us educational material that will actually roll out to our concessions. And the airlines already have a program, so we're going to integrate. Airport security project manager Desiree Curtis says that integration can help cut down on response times, something that is crucial. In June, KSAT reported a couple was arrested for allegedly trafficking a woman across state lines. The victim told police she escaped from a San Antonio hotel and went to the airport. And actually made a phone call to our communication center. And our communication center was able to get the data and get her the help she needed. And that's a success story because a lot of them can't get away and they are fear, they're intimidated or they're threatened. And so there is no way that they feel comfortable to going to someone else. Sex trafficking victims have told me that public restrooms are one of the only places they can go to get away from their trafficker for a point in time. That's why the San Antonio airport will soon have these cards in all of the bathrooms. They list a lot of resources, but a victim can also take one of these, quietly go up to any staff member in the airport, and that staff is already trained to alert the right people. It also works the other way. Airport staff or members of the public can pass that card to someone they think may be in trouble. Dewey says to look for these red flags when traveling. Does the person look disheveled, tired, hungry, or injured? Do they look nervous? Are they traveling with someone who seems to be in control of them? Is that travel partner the one handling the identification documents? And does the person even know the address on their own ID? Dewey says if you see any of these signs, call or tell someone. Even if you aren't sure, you may unknowingly be saving someone's life. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. If you or someone you know is possibly being trafficked, we have resources on our website right now at ksat.com. We've also included a list of red flags that you can look out for. Outside with live cam tonight after a sunny and very warm Sunday, we saw high temperatures at 80 degrees today. We're down 20 degrees to the low 60s this evening. And as you're getting everyone ready to head out the door in the morning, you will want a jacket. We're going to start off on the cool side near 50 degrees for a lot of us. Mostly clear skies, but some patchy fog will be possible tomorrow morning in and around San Antonio with some dense fog east of the I-35 corridor. So that is something you want to keep in mind for the Monday morning drive. Tomorrow afternoon looks warm, but showers are back in the forecast pretty soon. We'll talk all about that coming up in just a bit. Tim. Thank you, Katie. On to the latest now in the impeachment trial of President Donald Trump, whose lawyers are calling yesterday's session in the Senate 
A sneak preview of his defense, which appears to be accusing Democrats of trying to undo the 2016 election. President Trump took to Twitter today, calling the impeachment, quote, a massive election interference and claiming, quote, do nothing Democrats have seen their phony case absolutely shredded, end quote. In their opening statements this weekend, the president's legal team attacked the House case. But some Democrats say the president's lawyers undermined their own argument. Most of the Democrats' witnesses have never spoken to the president at all, let alone about Ukraine security assistance. They kept saying there are no eyewitness accounts. But there are people who have eyewitness accounts. The very four witnesses and the very four sets of documents that we have asked for. One example of the new evidence Democrats say requires further scrutiny is a video first reported last week by ABC News. Sources say it's from a private dinner at the Trump International Hotel in Washington back in April 2018. The president can be seen along with one of his sons and an indicted Giuliani associate, Lev Parnas. Among other subjects, they can be heard discussing Ukraine in detail. Still ahead on the night beat, we are continuing to follow the latest developments in the helicopter crash that killed NBA legend Kobe Bryant. We'll hear reactions from across the nation. Plus, five cases of the coronavirus now confirmed in mainland United States. The World Health Organization tonight developing a plan to contain the spread of that deadly virus. And the first contest of the 2020 race set for a week from Tuesday. We'll have the very latest from the campaign trail after the break. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. Senate Democrats who are also running for president are trying to make the most of their limited time away from the impeachment hearings, hitting the campaign trail hard. Meanwhile, a new ABC News Washington Post poll shows that former Vice President Joe Biden holds the lead in the national race, with Senator Bernie Sanders close on his heels. Here's ABC's Rachel Scott with the latest on campaign 2020. With just one week until the Iowa caucuses, the Democratic candidates are campaigning across the state. Democrats, to me, are making a mistake when we treat Donald Trump like the cause of all of our problems. He's not. He's the symptom of problems that have been building for years. The latest ABC News Washington Post poll shows former Vice President Joe Biden holding the lead nationally with 28 percent. When I look at Donald Trump, what he stands for, how he behaves, what he's done, my response is always the same. We are so much better than Donald Trump. So much better. Senator Bernie Sanders gaining momentum, surging five points in the latest poll, closing in on Biden with 24 percent. So polls are polls. What matters is the kind of grassroots activism that we have. And that's how I think you win elections. Senator Elizabeth Warren seeing her support among voters falling 10 points since October, but getting a key endorsement from the Des Moines Register. I just heard and I'm delighted. Um, it really means a lot to me. The four senators running for the Democratic nomination will be returning to Washington tomorrow for continuation of the impeachment trial. Senator Amy Klobuchar believes the voters will understand she has a constitutional duty to fulfill. I'm actually taking on the Trump administration uh, and all of their shenanigans and behavior. I think that's actually a good thing. Their opponents looking to take advantage of those senators' absence from the campaign trail. We've defied a lot of expectations to come to this point, and I think it's part of what will carry us to success on August this latest poll also found that while a majority of Democrats who named a candidate are enthusiastic about their choice, 53 percent did say they would still consider another candidate. Rachel Scott, ABC News, Des Moines, Iowa. Traded a gray Saturday for a sunny Sunday, and boy, was it gorgeous out there. Yeah. Difficult to come to work. In a snap. Yeah, I know. I was thinking the same thing driving in. Not a cloud in the sky. Yeah, nice and warm out there. A very warm for January. Some folks on Facebook have been saying... It was a nice day, but it was pretty warm out there. And yeah, you're right. A lot of us in the low 80s today, 83 the high in Del Rio and in Catula, 80 degrees the high temperature here in San Antonio, 76 up in Kerrville. Our average high this time of year in San Antonio is in the mid 60s. So yes, we were unseasonably warm this afternoon. We're down to 60 degrees now at the airport, low 50s, upper 40s in the hill country, just shy of 60 degrees there in Del Rio. It's very comfortable out there. Humidity is nice, nice and low for now, but we're going to see that humidity 
humidity sneak up just a bit through early tomorrow morning and that could result in uh, some more patchy fog to start the day on Monday. Very quiet out there now. We've got to zoom out to a view of Texas to really get any rain or cloud cover to show up here on our satellite radar view. Uh, the rain and clouds from yesterday, that's all moving off uh, across the deep south tonight. There are some clouds moving into more north Texas, the panhandle there, but you've got to go off closer to the west coast to see the next disturbance that brings us a chance of showers late tomorrow and into early on Tuesday. And when you look at things here, it doesn't look like a whole lot. Yeah, we've got some precip here uh, from uh, Arizona up through portions of Utah, some rain uh, moving out of Las Vegas there. When I put on the upper level winds, though, what's going on in the upper levels of the atmosphere, you notice we've got a little kink or a little dip in the jet stream right there. That's an upper level disturbance that will be pacing east toward Texas during the day tomorrow. Won't really arrive though until late Monday, early Tuesday. So we're going to keep your rain free tomorrow. Overall, a lot of sunshine for your Monday, and that'll put our afternoon temperatures back in the 70s tomorrow afternoon. As we get into late tomorrow evening, we'll start to increase the cloud cover. I think a few sprinkles and showers will be possible west of I-35 by late tomorrow evening. Overnight, here's 5 a.m. Tuesday. Some showers developing off to the west, approaching the I-35 corridor. Closer to dawn on Tuesday, so here in San Antonio, our best chance for a line of broken showers to move through. That'll be right around dawn between about 6 and 8 a.m., on Tuesday morning, then those showers will continue to move off to the east through mid morning on Tuesday. Best chance of rain will be east of town over on the coastal bend. All that rain will continue to move off into far east Texas, and we should see some nice clearing by Tuesday afternoon. But that's not our only shot at rain this week. We've got a couple of disturbances moving through. Here's the first one that brings us that shot of rain early on Tuesday. It'll move out fairly quickly, but on its heels, another upper level low will be digging down a bit farther south as we get into Thursday and Friday. This farther south positioning here that actually could help us out a little bit with rain chances. We'll have a slightly higher coverage of showers as we get into late Thursday and Friday this week. So another chance of rain, but do keep in mind tomorrow some patchy fog possible in and around San Antonio with more dense fog east of I-35. Wouldn't be surprised if for some of our eastern counties we do see a dense fog advisory put out early tomorrow. So do just keep that in mind as you're heading out the door in the morning. By mid-morning, a little bit of lingering fog for our coastal bend counties. Everyone else clearing out very nicely. And tomorrow, I think it looks a lot like today. A lot of sunshine, high temperatures, mid to upper 70s. But do keep in mind, we'll see cloud cover increasing late tomorrow evening ahead of that chance of showers. 20% chance overnight. Best chance will come early around dawn Tuesday morning. A 40% chance for rain here in town. We clear out nicely by Tuesday afternoon. Wednesday is a nice day. And we continue to cool down, though, with the clouds and the rain Thursday into Friday. That'll limit our high temperatures to just the upper 50s. Winter says, hey, still here. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's trying. It's trying its hardest. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Katie. You're welcome. We'll be right back. The Spurs pay tribute to Kobe Bryant today after his death, along with one of his daughters in a helicopter crash in California that killed nine people. With more, let's check in with our Greg Simmons on what's on Instant Replay tonight. Greg, a very difficult day. Tragic day, and not just for the Bryant family as well. It's all the families who had people on board that helicopter. And the Spurs host the Toronto Raptors today and what they did for Kobe to start the game. Coming up tonight on a brand new edition of Instant Replay. They have decided that whoever wins the tip, and in this case Toronto, they are going to let the shot clock run out because of the number 24 to honor Kobe Bryant. The Spurs and the Raptors both took 24-second violations to start today's game here in San Antonio to go along with a standing ovation to pay tribute to one of the greatest players we have ever seen. They also conducted a moment of silence before the game in the wake of the tragic death of Kobe Bryant and his daughter in a helicopter crash in California. Uh, good game, tough loss, who cares? Um, most importantly, uh, appreciate you all letting the locker room be tonight. Uh, everybody's pretty emotional about the tragedy uh, with Kobe. A very emotional moment for the Spurs and NBA family as they react to the monumental loss. Tears flowing today from Tim Duncan to Becky Hammond and Sean Elliott, making today's game tough to coach and call against the Raptors. We also have reaction from around the world as sports figures pay tribute to Kobe. We also have this exclusive tonight. How do you even put into words what people feel when you lose, you know, the guy that you've been looking up to and the guy that's on a world stage has helped take the game to the next level? I, I mean, it's... Um, 
hard to even put into words. The Admiral David Robinson shares his thought with us tonight on this loss of one of the greatest players to ever suit up and play the game and who had many playoff battles with the Admiral as he won two NBA titles on the court and other three as part owner of the Spurs, all of which had to go through Kobe and the Lakers at some point. All that plus who wins Super Bowl 54 on Sunday, the San Francisco 49ers or the Kansas City Chiefs tonight. You decide. Instant Replay is live. And it's after the night beat, Tim. So much of the Spurs history tied to the Lakers and Kobe. Indeed. Thanks, Greg. We'll see in just a little bit. Myra, here's more coming up on the night beat. Uh, the nation uh, feeling the loss following the death of Kobe Bryant. by well, the latest details from the crash and how others are honoring his legacy tonight. Plus, uh, how passing a passion for crafting is saving one man's life. And nowadays, everything is streamed from movies to TV shows, but the biggest of them all is music. We'll break down which streaming app is the best. Millions tonight feeling the loss of NBA legend Kobe Bryant, who died, as you know, now in a helicopter crash this morning in California. And we have new information tonight. Eight others also died in that crash, including Bryant's daughter, Gianna, her teammate, Alyssa, and her parents, Carrie and John Altobelli, who was a baseball coach at Orange Coast College. Those names just confirmed by the L.A. County Coroner's Office. ABC's Romina Puga has more reaction from around the nation. This is the fiery scene where a helicopter carrying NBA legend Kobe Bryant and eight other people crashed, killing everyone on board. South of... 101 helicopter went down. Bryant reportedly traveling with his 13-year-old daughter Gianna to her basketball game when witnesses heard the chopper flying low. Well, I heard a, uh, a helicopter just flying just way too low, and I heard like a loud thud noise. Fans around the world devastated by the sudden death of the icon, widely regarded as one of the greatest basketball players of all time. Bryant was drafted to the NBA straight from high school in 1996, spending his entire 20-year career with the Los Angeles Lakers. The 18-time All-Star winning five NBA championships as well as two Olympic gold medals. The 41-year-old married father of four retired from basketball in 2016. His third all-time scoring record passed just hours before the crash by LeBron James. Bryant responding with what would be his final tweet, continuing to move the game forward at King James. Much respect, my brother. I'm happy just to be in a, any conversation with Kobe Bean Bryant. One of the all-time greatest basketball players to ever play. Inside the Staples Center, where Kobe In spent his storied career, stars at the Grammys paying tribute. <laughs> Fans gathered outside. Thank you, Kobe! And fellow NBA greats honoring Bryant on social media. Shaquille O'Neal posting on Instagram that there are no words to express his pain calling Bryant his brother. Michael Jordan echoing that, writing, I am in shock, calling Bryant a fierce competitor, one of the greats of the game and a creative force. That was Romina Puga reporting. There are now five confirmed cases of the coronavirus in the U.S., the latest being confirmed in Arizona today. Los Angeles County health officials say that one of the latest coronavirus patients, someone from Wuhan, China, was passing through L.A. on vacation. That person is the second person to have the virus in California. The director general of the World Health Organization is now headed to China to support local authorities there. This all follows an announcement made by a top Chinese health official today saying that people infected with the virus are contagious before they show any symptoms. If they can spread the disease for days before they become sick, then just quarantining those sick people is not a sufficient strategy. CDC officials are urging the Department of Health and Human Services to declare the coronavirus a public health emergency. There are more than 40 confirmed cases in 13 locations outside of China, where more than 2,000 people have been sickened. Around America tonight, two people were killed overnight during a shooting at a nightclub in South Carolina. Police in Hartsville, just northeast of Columbia, say at least five other people were wounded as well. No word on their conditions tonight. There's also been no word on whether any arrests have been made. State law enforcement are now helping with the investigation.
In North Carolina, six people hurt in a shooting at a restaurant there. This happened in the town of Salisbury, north of Charlotte. Police say someone opened fire inside that restaurant early this morning following a party. One person is in serious condition, while others were injured by either gunfire or being trampled. No word yet if that shooter has been caught. In New York, three people, a man, woman, and a child were killed during a violent home invasion. Authorities in Newburgh, which is north of New York City, say it all happened early this morning. Officers there responded to a report of shots fired at the family's home and then found the bodies. Another child, approximately three years old, airlifted to a hospital in critical condition. Police said they have a person of interest in custody. No other details have been released. Around the world now, 12 people have died and 230 others have been injured in protests in Iraq over the past three days. That's according to the Independent High Commission for Human Rights of Iraq. Nine protesters were reportedly killed in Baghdad and three others in a southern city. More than 600 people have been killed in anti-government demonstrations since last October. Just yesterday, dozens of Iraqi security forces reportedly used live ammunition and tear gas to break up hundreds of anti-government protesters in Baghdad. For the first time in the country's history, the Dutch Prime Minister issued an apology for the government's failure to protect Jews during the Holocaust. PM Mark Rudy said, in part, quote, when a group of fellow countrymen were set apart by a murderous regime, shut out and dehumanized, we failed, end quote. His remarks were delivered at Amsterdam's Auschwitz Memorial today. He acknowledged many Dutch people played a part in the resistance, but says too little protection Help and recognition was given to Jews. Looking outside with live cam tonight. This time last night, it was foggy. We had a lot of drizzle out there, just a mess. And we've got a cool, clear night on our hands now. Temperature uh, right at 60 degrees at the airport. But by tomorrow morning, we'll see our low temperatures bottom out. Upper 40s, low 50. So it will be a cool start to the day. You will want the jacket, but you will definitely not need it by the afternoon. We're looking at afternoon temperatures back in the mid to upper 70s. No rain tomorrow, but that will change late tomorrow night and into Tuesday. We'll talk about that and get you ready for the week ahead. Coming up here in just a few minutes. Myra. All right, thanks, Katie. Giving back to the community through a project that he is passionate about. What's Up South Texas is next. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. He's a man who has nothing, but has dedicated his life to giving everything through preaching the gospel. Tonight, 46-year-old Miguel Zamora is part of our What's Up South Texas series, where we feature unique people in our community. Jeff Gray tells us, Miguel, it was as his passion of creating crosses from palm leaves that has brought him out of dark times. I love crosses and I love, I love most, but first of all, I love my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Several times a week at this intersection of Calabria and Zarzamora Street, you may have seen this man handing out crosses handmade from palm leaves. I feel like I'm giving to the people and hoping that one, that it might help somebody as well. His name is Miguel Zamora. My dream always as a kid was to be a movie star. <laughs> uh, I always said, I always said, I'm a, I'm a star in The Walking Dead. That, that's a show. <laughs> Unfortunately, life took a turn for the worse for Miguel after he got involved in gang activity. Ten years oh, ago, he found himself in so. prison, but it was in there that his life began to change. And the only thing that had kept me sane is, is reading my Bible, you know, and, and listening to we had a radio listening to the word of God. When he got out, Miguel became addicted to drugs, which ultimately landed him and his wife on the streets. As much trouble as I've been in, there was always people that loved me and, and prayed for me. He says prayers are what helped him put the needle down and spread the gospel. I love to encourage them no matter what they're going through to let them know, look, hey, I've been through this and this and this, but I also had a way out. Another motivation for Miguel, his children who do not know he's homeless. I do think of them daily. I think of them daily, like, and I want, I want, I mean, they're all successful and stuff like that. And, I mean, I just want them to understand that I, that I love them no matter what. Miguel says he is now a street warrior for Christ. Walked uh, across from uh, New Braunfels, Southern Springs, uh, and I of the people there. And six months sober. I see hurt inside of him. 
and I see all of these this this pain but he still pulls through every day and it makes me so proud of him. Miguel's ambition to fight his struggles while continuing his cross making for the community is a strong comeback for what's up South Texas. It just shows me not, not to give up because God didn't give up on me even though he got on that cross. He thought of me. He thought of me and, and he didn't give up. Now Miguel is by far one of the sweetest men I have ever met and like I said his story is so inspiring. I had the honor of getting one of these beautiful pieces and I got it on my desk specifically because it represents strength. You know he said his main takeaway message that he wants viewers to know is to never give up. No his life isn't perfect and yes he's still working to get back on track but he wants people to understand the importance of never giving up. And he has a talent. Oh my God! Look at these. I mean, he made this in like five minutes. That's like, intricate, and it's it was, really beautiful. Did he say how he came across this ability? He to be said able to make somebody this? actually taught him how to do it at one point in time in his life, and then he was like, "Before I know it, I was just folding." And then I, I realized that it was a gift. And he's even tried teaching others in the homeless community how to do it uh, themselves as well. So he's just all about spreading the gospel and then spreading the the need to move forward, no matter what you've been through. All right, another great story. Thank you, Jaffney. Mm -hmm. Still to come, much like film and TV, the music industry seems to be moving to streaming services after the break. We'll help you sort out which service might be the best one for you. So how do you get your music? Streaming has now surpassed both digital downloads and those old things we used to buy, CDs. It's now 80% of the music market, but with so many streaming services out there, how do you know which one to choose? 12 on your side's Marilyn Mortz shuffles through some of the options. When it comes to streaming music, you have a lot of options. In recent years, a lot of companies have entered the music streaming space, so it can be hard for consumers to pick which one is the best for them. Most offer a big selection of music for about $10 a month for a single account, more for a family account. These services can be used on most devices, including your smart speaker. Among the most popular are Apple Music and Spotify. Apple Music is nice if you have a lot of Apple products because it plays with the ecosystem really well. Spotify's really been investing in podcasts a lot over the past couple of years, and one of the nice features that they have now is you you can listen to podcasts and other kinds of audio directly within the same app, which can be really convenient. But if your needs are more specific, say you're an audiophile willing to pay a little more for higher quality audio, you have options like Tidal and Amazon Music HD. Tidal's high resolution tier is $20 a month, and Amazon Music HD is $15 a month, 13 if you're a Prime member. Keep in mind, higher quality audio uses more data. And if Mozart is more your jam. There are a couple options for you as well, like Idagio and Prime Phonic, which are two services that are tailored for classical music and let you do things like sort by composer or performer. If you're not sure what service is best for you, take advantage of the free trial periods that most services offer before you commit to monthly payments. And if you don't want to pay anything, many like YouTube Music, Pandora, and Spotify offer free versions with ads. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. You know what I'm still all about with the streaming Pandora? Because you can set a sleep timer. Oh. I haven't oh. figured out how you can do that on Apple Music, hmm. but I rely heavily on that sleep timer. Well, I didn't even know you could do that. So. I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> Learning go. something new today. <laughs> yeah, I, I do what I can. Sure Thanks, enough. Katie. Yeah, you're welcome. You're yeah. welcome. More uh, than just forecasts here. <laughs> Yep, for sure, for sure. Getting ready for the week ahead. We're going to have some ups and downs when it comes to sky conditions and rain chances. Actually, a couple shots at rain this week. Temperatures, though, will be going from warmer to cooler. Take a look at this. We've got some cooler days up ahead, but that will also coincide with additional cloud cover and chances of showers later on this week. Tomorrow, another warm day with our high temperatures back well above average. It was <laughs> this weekend was really cool from a weather perspective. We were so cloudy and gray yesterday. The drizzle fog last night and then Pretty much the complete opposite today to finish the weekend. Uh, there's our cloud cover and rain from Saturday, making some good progress the south, uh, across the southeastern United States there. And of course, that left us here in Texas today with a lot of blue sky. And it's very quiet out there uh, as far as satellite and radar is concerned. Temperatures right at 60 degrees at the airport, down to 49 in Kerrville, 54 in Uvalde, 60 degrees in Catula. Our dew points are in the 40s, 30s, well off to the west. So we did see our dew points 
temperatures drop a lot from where they were yesterday. And while the air is fairly dry, as we see our air temperatures drop down to the upper 40s, low 50s tonight, that will set us up for uh, some fog developing through dawn tomorrow. Right now, things are perfectly fine. We do have one mile visibility there in Corpus, but across most of South Texas, visibility is just fine right now. Through the overnight hours, we'll we're taking you to dawn tomorrow, 7 a.m. Uh, some dense fog is a good bet, especially east of the I-35 corridor, well east of I-35, and in around San Antonio. Some patchy fog will be possible, but it'll definitely be more on the dense side off to the east of the I-35 corridor. If you're up in the hill country well west of 35, you may not see any fog at all. That fog will clear up by mid morning and then we'll see a lot of sunshine again tomorrow. So just keep that in mind uh, for your early morning commute. 49 the low temperature tonight under mostly clear skies with that patchy fog developing by dawn. Clearing up by mid morning, we'll see another warm, mostly sunny day tomorrow. High temperatures will be back in the mid to upper 70s winds becoming southerly tomorrow south southeast winds 5 to 10 miles per hour and while I expect a lot of sun for the majority of the day on Monday we will bring in some cloud cover late in the evening tomorrow ahead of our next chance of shower so again through tomorrow a lot of sunshine but as we get past sunset we'll be looking for cloud cover to increase and even some showers and sprinkles developing tomorrow evening west of San Antonio and west of I-35 we get past midnight into the pre-dawn hours of Tuesday morning that's when we'll have a better chance chance of some passing showers, a broken line of showers, maybe a rumble of thunder, but severe weather is not a concern here at all. We're looking at really just a broken line of showers moving east across the area early Tuesday morning. That could pose some issues for the Tuesday morning commute. By 7, 8 o'clock, all that rain is moving off to the east closer to the Houston area, and we'll actually pull off a really nice second half of the day on Tuesday as things start to clear out. That takes us into Wednesday, sunny, but a little bit cooler with highs in the 60s. Here come the clouds and rain chances again Thursday into Friday. That'll drop our high temperatures into the upper 50s toward the end of the week. And as has been the case here lately, we're going to looks like we'll pull off another really spectacular weekend <laughs> next weekend. Don't mind that. Nope. All right. Thanks, Katie. You're welcome. We'll be back right after this. Jumanji The Next Level dropped one level to fifth place on ticket sales of $7.9 million. Matthew McConaughey and The Gentleman made a fourth place debut, opening with $11 million. Doolittle stayed in third place, adding $12.5 million to its kitty. Oscar favorite 1917 kept second place, crossing the 100 million mark domestically with a $15.8 million weekend. Whoa, where you get all the toys? Bad Boys for Life easily kept the top spot, earning $34 million for a 10 day total of 121 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. I'm the base. The Spurs in the Windy City tonight for a quick turnaround following their game against Toronto here in San Antonio this afternoon. We will get you ready for their showdown with the Bulls. And one Texas State basketball player breaks a record that has stood for 60 years. With more of what's on instant replay tonight, let's head over to our Greg Simmons. Hey, thank you very much. And a boxer from my alma mater, Jefferson High School, stays undefeated. Coming up tonight on a brand new edition of Instant Replay. Oh, and that's spit up and head to Zach. He rakes his hand and dunks the ball. The Spurs are in the Windy City tonight for a quick turnaround game against the Chicago Bulls tomorrow night before they host the Utah Jazz and later the Charlotte Hornets in their last home games before they begin their annual rodeo road trip. We'll get you ready for the Spurs' next opponent and know your foe. But it, like when I'm in the game, literally some people say it and they don't mean it, but the only thing that matters to me is coming out with that win. Texas State has a new all-time leading scorer in basketball. Our Jessica Hunt profiles a man who broke the record that has stood for 60 years. The Rampage hold their annual Pink in the Rink night for cancer survivors and their families. Our Andrew Seeley will get you ready for the big moment as he also profiles a Rampage's longest tenured employee off the ice. Jefferson High School alum Gregory Morales stays undefeated in the ring while Canelo Alvarez's next fight won't be in San Antonio. For that matter, not in the United States. All that plus more reaction on the tragic death of Kobe Bryant and one of his daughters in today's helicopter crash in California. And the story on a career milestone for a Highlands High School basketball player. Instant Replay is live, and it's next. We'll see you in just a bit, Greg. Thank you. We'll be right back. It has been a day full of sadness, so we want to end your night by telling you something good. At this Hawaii public school, every kid from kindergarten through the fifth grade is a published author. 
The stories are grouped by grade. In three years, KY has produced about 150 student books. They're sold to parents and people in the community as a fundraiser. And when the books are ready, the school holds a publishing party and the students autograph their work. That is another confidence booster. Something good to tell you about to end your night here. Mm -hmm. That is all our time for now. For all of us here at KSAT 12, thanks for watching. Tune in to Good Morning San Antonio for all your latest overnight news. An all new instant replay starts now. I, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I did not know this until you just walked up to me right now. Um, one of the best players all, of all time. Um, it's shocking. It's sad. The loss of Kobe when I, when I found out, it, it was surreal. Man, it doesn't even make sense. It doesn't even sound right. It doesn't feel right. It's just hard to believe, man. You know, someone as big and almost immortal like that could pass on. Shocking, incredibly sad, and weirdly stomach upsetting. We all love him. We love you, Kobe. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to a brand new edition of Instant Replay, a monumental loss in the world of sports today and the death of Kobe Bryant. We have a reaction from all around the world to go along with our own NBA family right here in San Antonio, including Manu Ginobili and Tony Parker and an exclusive with the Admiral David Robinson, who shares his thoughts on the life of one of the most formidable opponents in his pro basketball career. The five-time NBA champion, 2008 NBA MVP, was among the nine people that lost their lives in a helicopter crash in California this morning. Tragically, among the dead were his 13-year-old daughter, Gianna. They were on their way to see her play in his own tournament in Thousand Oaks, California, when the helicopter they were traveling in went down in foggy conditions in the hills of Calabasas, close to Thousand Oaks. Now, Kobe Bryant was signed by the Lakers at just the age of 17, meaning his parents had to sign his first professional contract with him. He would finish his NBA career in 2016 as the third leading scorer in NBA history, just passed, by the way, by LeBron James. In fact, the 14th anniversary of his career-high 81 points against the Toronto Raptors on January 22nd, 2006, was just a few days ago. When team with Shaquille O'Neal, the pair would lead the Lakers to three straight NBA titles from 2000 to 2002 under then-head coach Phil Jackson, despite tensions between the two. We're getting reaction from all over the world after the death of Kobe Bryant at the age of 41. The Spurs hosted the Raptors this afternoon. They paid tribute to Kobe, with both teams taking 24-second violations to start their game game and give Brian a standing ovation. The most emotional interview today when addressing the media had to be Clippers head coach Doc Rivers. Uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, I just don't have a lot to say. I, uh, the news is just devastating to everybody uh, who knew him, known him a long time. And, uh, you know, he, he just, he, mean, he means a lot to me, obviously. Um, you know, he was such a great opponent, you know. Um, it's what you want in sports. Fans started to gather outside the Staples Center today ahead of the Grammys. Fans were heard chanting, thank you, Kobe, MVP. The Lakers will face the Clippers Tuesday night at 9 p.m. at the Staples Center. On the other side of the world, Brazilian soccer star Neymar gave his tribute to Kobe after making a penalty kick, holding up a two and a four in reference to Kobe Bryant's jersey number. Here's some of the reaction from our Spurs. Manu Ginobili simply said, devastated. Tony Parker tweeted, I'm heartbroken by this news. You are a true legend and friend. Rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. My thoughts and prayers to his wife and kids. LaMarcus Aldridge said that after today's game, hard to put what you meant to so many people into words. I will miss a great person on and off the court. You always took the time to show my family and kids love, and I will never forget that RIP Kobe. And Shaquille O'Neal said, there are no words to express the pain I'm going through with this tragedy of losing my niece Gigi and my brother Kobe. Bryant, I love you and you will be missed. My condolences goes out to the Bryant family and the families of the other passengers on board. I'm sick right now. Case at 12 Sports caught up with the Admiral David Robinson to share his thoughts on the loss of Kobe Bryant. Yeah, um, shock, devastated. I, you know, for, for me personally, I mean, he's a member of our NBA family, right? Or he's, our, he's a great, a legend. He's a you know, somebody we've all admired and respected for a long time. So within the NBA family, just shocked and devastated. But from a worldwide perspective, you know, he's an icon. I mean, he's he, he's this generation's Michael Jordan, you know, and, and so 
how do you even put into words what people feel when you lose, you know, the guy that you've been looking up to and the guy that's on a world stage has helped take the game to the next level? I, I mean, it's um, hard to even put into words. I mean, we played on the same team a lot in the, in the uh, All-Star games, and he, he always treated me with ultimate respect. He treated my boys very, very well. They have great memories of you know, one game after an All-Star game, he came up and he gave them his, shoe, his shoes. I mean, just a, a good guy, just a, a, a smart guy, kind. Um, you know, and my interactions with him have always been uh, the very best. So, um, yeah, I have nothing but great memories with, with Kobe. And here's a look at his career accomplishments in 20 years with the Lakers, a five-time NBA champion, two-time NBA Finals MVP, one NBA MVP in 2008, 18-time NBA All-Star, four-time NBA All-Star MVP, 11-time All-NBA First Team, nine-time NBA All-Defensive Team, two-time NBA Scoring Champion, and two-time Olympic Gold Medalist. Both the Spurs and Raptors both had to go out and play after learning of Kobe's passing only a few hours before tip-off. The Raptors' Pascal Siakam came out on a mission, scoring 25 first-quarter points. That was more than the entire Spurs team and had together after the first quarter. Siakam could not miss. Raptors are up 37-21 after one. Second quarter, Spurs on the break. Patty Mills with the assist to Jakob Pertl for the basket and the foul, a three-point play. Then LaMarcus Aldridge with the bucket. He was the only Spur in double figures at the break with 10. Raptors up 63-51 and half time Toronto had 11 threes at the half they were shooting 49 percent from the field third quarter Spurs come back DeJounte Murray with back-to-back -back threes to cut the Raptors lead to seven then Murray with another three to tie the game at 73 all San Antonio would tie it twice more in the quarter would retake the lead by three thanks to free throws but Serge Ibaka gives the Raptors a one-point lead 86-85 going to the fourth quarter that's where the Spurs jump out in front Rudy Gay with a drive the layup in the paint Patty Mills stepping up for a three and getting the friendly bounce. Jakob Pertl with the bank shot to give the Spurs an eight-point lead. But the Raptors would tie it up again, and they go up by six with this alley-oop dunk by Siakam. DeMar DeRozan responds to his former team with this drive to make it 105-103. Next time down the floor, DeRozan ties the game up at 105 with one minute to play. Then Fred Van Fleet would score the next five for the Raptors, making this three and free throws down the stretch. Here is your final score. The Raptors beat the Spurs 110-106. to 106. San Antonio's now 20-25 and 25 overall, 12-12 and 12 at home. We have reaction from both the Spurs and the Raptors after the game on the passing of Kobe Bryant. With more, here's our Jessica Hunt. For many current NBA players, Kobe Bryant played an instrumental influence on their careers. His passing and legacy weighed heavily on both the minds of coaches and players alike during Sunday's 110 to 106 Toronto Raptors victory over the San Antonio Spurs. But for both teams, this never really felt like a normal game. He went beyond great playing. He was a competitor uh, that is that goes unmatched, and it's what made him. Uh, as a player so attractive everybody, that focus, uh, that competitiveness, that will to win. Uh, and even more importantly than that, uh, we all feel a, a deep sense of loss for what he meant to all of us in so many ways and so many millions of people loved him for so many different reasons. Uh, it's just a, a, a tragic thing that uh, there are no words that can describe uh, how everybody feels about it. So. Uh, we all think about the family and the process that they're going to be going through now. Uh, that's where all our thoughts should be. Learning everything I've, I've learned basketball-wise from Kobe, what he meant to the game, the inspiration that he brought to the world. Um, not just that, um, his daughter, I'm a father. Um, I can't imagine something like that, you know, happening. Obviously, we were all in shock, kind of um, not wanting to believe um, the stuff we were um, reading and what everything was telling us. Everyone was trying to, you know, find confirmation because no one wanted to believe what was going on. And you think about, you know, his family and his yeah. friends and, and, and the situation that they're going through. Uh, so you just want to go home and, and kind of uh, kiss your kids and, and, and your wife and you know the rest is is just 
relevant right now? Um, I don't think anybody was that interested in the game. But we got a, we got a job to do. I think both teams did a good job going out there and performing. And, um, you know, we were able to get the win. So move on and we'll console each other and, and you know, be together as a family. And, and I think the world is kind of dealing with this one together. After the loss, the Spurs locker room was close to the media to respect the players and staff grieving the loss of a figure so monumental in the popularity of the NBA. From the AT&T Center, Jessica Hunt, KSAT 12 Sports. Thank you, Jessica. Here's a look at today's final stats. And between the Spurs and the Raptors, a shooting about equal 41%. The three-point shooting dead on, 16 for 16 for each of the two teams. In the free throw department, the Spurs got to the line more and made more. Rebounding department, the edge goes to the Raptors that way. And the turnover department is what really told today's story here. You look at the amount of steals the Raptors had and the overall amount of turnovers that the Spurs generated, 16 to the Raptors, just eight. Here's a look at the Spurs' schedule this week. They'll be in Chicago tomorrow for a 7 p.m. tip-off. Back home for their final two games where they start the rodeo road trip against Utah on Wednesday, Charlotte on Saturday. Time now for tonight's instant replay poll question. Who wins Super Bowl 54? San Francisco or Kansas City? Vote through social media. Email us or text us at 210-218-6744. We look forward to your answer and comments tonight. We're one week away from the game of the year. When we come back, Super Bowl 54 is almost here. The teams have landed in Miami for Super Bowl 54. Who is favored to win? Now, as we get you ready for Super Bowl Sunday, one week from tonight, Larry Ramirez will also have highlights from today's Pro Bowl. J.J. Watt is just days away from hosting Saturday Night Live, while the Raiders have officially changed their name from Oakland to Las Vegas. And we remember Kobe Bryant is one of the greatest basketball players of all time in the sports guys later in this half hour. That really wasn't my goal. I just, my goal is to keep scoring and keep getting better, keep playing, keep helping this win. And along the way, I knew it would, it would come. The Texas State Bobcats have a new all-time leading scorer, our own Jessica Hunt, went to San Marcos to catch up with Nigel Pearson. Andrew Seeley has a story of the Rampage equipment manager has worked his 1,000 game for the team. A young lady from Highlands High School just scored her 2,000 career point. We got that story. A lot is happening in boxing. A Jefferson High School alum fights in Cali. Kendo Tremendo prepares for his Florida fight and did some someone cheat here in San Antonio in the Alamo Dome to win some belts. We'll tell you with Inside the Ring as Canelo Alvarez takes to Twitter to do some trash talking and we'll take a look ahead to next week with know your foe as the spurs face the bulls and the jazz when instant replay continues live next